coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. I treated Karen the same way for years into our marriage, and it never worked. It only brought us to the brink of divorce. But I wouldn't change. You know what I thought? I thought one day she'll get it. <laughs> one day she one day she did, and she almost left me. And I read that verse one morning where it says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And that night, I prayed a prayer and said, Holy Spirit, teach me how to be a husband. He changed every thought in my head. We're learning from the life of King David, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is a good one this morning because we're gonna talk about David the winner. We're gonna talk about the story of David and Goliath. And this is one of the most inspirational stories in the entire Bible because, you know, David was a, a young boy who killed a nine foot tall a giant with a slingshot. And it's very inspirational because all of us in our lives face a giant, whether it's a disease or a, an infirmity or a relationship issue, or a financial issue, or just some, something in life where we feel like we're outmatched. Uh, David is an inspirational figure in this story, to say the least, of how he overcame Goliath. But, but the premise of this entire message is what I'm about to say right now. David killed Goliath not because of how he fought, but how he thought. Any soldier in Israel could have done what David did, because there was really nothing that remarkable about it. He threw a, a, a rock out of a slingshot toward a giant. Anyone could have done the same thing if they would have been thinking like David thought. But here's the interesting thing. When David killed Goliath, before that, these for 40 days, Goliath had been taunting Israel and all the trained soldiers, the greatest soldiers in Israel were afraid to go up against Goliath. But the interesting thing is once David killed Goliath, mighty men began to arise out of the ranks of Israel and do phenomenal things that they had never been able to do before because when they saw what David did and they began to think, began to be trained by David to think like David thought. I, I wanna say something to you. you. You can defeat the Goliaths that are in your life right now. You were born for victory. You were born for success. You, you may have had a season of failure or problems or defeat or setbacks, but that was in the past. Once you learn how to think, you can do remarkable things through the power of God. Now we're gonna read the story of David and Goliath. We're gonna skip around just a little bit to shorten it. But we're gonna read the story that we're gonna talk about what made David such a great thinker. This is 1 Samuel 17. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Now this is verse 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. This is verse 31. When the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. When it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both a lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. And that's just part of the story. We'll read just excerpts of the story as I talk about these issues. Da David was a unique individual, to say the least. And he was able to kill a nine foot tall giant when no one else could because of the way he thought. Here are the four elements of great thinking. If you're gonna be a great thinker, if you're talented, you're, you're very talented you know, because God put talents and giftings in you. It's not the issue. You're destined for greatness. That's not the issue. That's, that's, but the way you think will determine what you do in life. And here are the four elements of great thinking. Number one is faith thinking. All great thinkers are faith thinkers. All the men of Israel were fear thinkers. They were locked in fear, but David was a faith thinker. 
And faith thinking focuses on the reward. Fear thinking focuses on the consequences if I fail. And so David was obsessed with the reward. He kept asking, what's gonna be done for the man who kills this giant? This is verse 25 of 1 Samuel 17. The men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches and give him his daughter. That's before Facebook, so you're hoping she's cute. <laughs> he may be trying to pawn off you know, the daughter he can't marry off, so. <laughs> and give his father's house exemption for taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine? and takes away the reproach from Israel, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. See, everybody else was locked in fear. Fear is expecting the devil to move. Faith is expecting God to move. Fear is obsessed with the negative consequences of failure, but faith is obsessed with the positive consequences of obedience. And so David knows when when. Goliath starts coming up against the armies of Israel. Saul goes to his soldiers to inspire somebody to, to, get, to go against him. He's not going to make anybody do it. But to inspire them, he says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to give you my daughter. And I'm going to exempt your father's house from taxes forever. Let me tell you something. That is one good deal. But not one person took him up on it. They were fear thinkers. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith thinking is two things. It's number one, it's God focused. And number two is it's reward focused. Faith thinking means God is with me. God is. God is with me and God is a rewarder. And so everyone else, I guess they had forgotten that God was there and they didn't think that there would be. They thought they were gonna get killed. They were just locked in fear. David kept asking the men around him, now tell me one more time, what's gonna happen to the guy who kills him? He was a faith thinker, he was a positive thinker. And so understand, nothing is gonna happen in this life by fear. fear God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. I wanna say something to you right now. You can do anything that God told you to do. Anything the Bible tells you to do, anything that God tells you to do, you can do it if you have faith in God. If you don't have faith in God, you can't do it. If you have faith in God, nothing will be impossible with you. So David was a faith thinker rather than a fear thinker. The second element of great thinking is four-dimensional thinking. David was a four-dimensional thinker. In other words, he didn't just see in the three dimensions. He knew that there was a spirit realm that could not be seen. This is 1 Samuel 17, 26. David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Uncircumcised. David called Goliath uncircumcised several times. And I wanna be careful in how I talk about this, but let me talk about circumcision for just a minute. Now, God came to Abraham and made a covenant with Abraham. And God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm gonna give you this land. This, this is the covenant land I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna make your descendants like the stars of the sky and whoever blesses you, I'll bless and whoever curses you, I'll curse. And he said, this is an everlasting covenant and we're gonna seal the deal with circumcision. Goliath was uncircumcised. He was not a Jew. And for 40 days, he had been cursing Israel and their God. And for 40 days, the, the armies of Israel were literally trembling in their boots. That's what the Bible says. Goliath came down, an uncircumcised man, not in covenant with him, and he was provoking the side of the covenant that God said, if anyone curses you, I'll curse them. Okay, so David shows up. Everybody else gets afraid of Goliath. David gets mad. And he says, who is this? Who, who is this chump? This uncircumcised chump down here. Uncircumcised, uncircumcised. And probably one of the other soldiers said, would you lower your voice? He's probably a little bit self-conscious about it. <laughs> You're gonna get us all killed. It's a very private medical thing. You don't talk about those things, David. 
Maybe it's a private medical thing. I'm under the covering of my covenant God because I'm circumcised. That man, A, is not circumcised, so he's not in covenant. And B, he's been cursing us for 40 days. He's cursed. I'm blessed. He's cursed. I'm going to kill him. He's a four-dimensional thinker. Well, let me, let me say something to you. We don't live in three dimensions. There's a spirit realm around us. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith because God lives in the invisible realm. There are angels in this place. Did you know that? There are angels in this place. And Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. God is in the invisible realm here with us. We have angels in the invisible realm here with us. In all the armies of Israel, see, one of the schemes of the devil is to so overwhelm us with problems in the natural realm that we become so overwhelmed we forget that God's with us. And this is exactly what he did with this nine foot tall giant. When Goliath stepped out, if it would have been an ordinary looking soldier of the Philistines that stepped out, I mean, somebody would have already fought him and maybe killed him, but this, this was an overwhelming human being. And Goliath steps out and his spear and his sword and everything about him is overwhelming. And they're just standing there with their jaw open and with their knees knocking, thinking, oh my gosh, we can't kill him. David shows up to the battle line and says, who is that uncircumcised chump? He ain't circumcised. He didn't, he didn't have a chance. He's not in the covenant. We're in the covenant. We're the covenant people of God. This is the story of Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb walked in and saw a land full of giants. The promised land wasn't one giant named Goliath. It was a nation full of giants. And God said, go take your land. You can kill those giants. And 10 of the spies came out and said, we were like grasshoppers in our sight. And the people wept and wanted to go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb came out and said, those people, their protection has been lifted from them. And they're going to be our prey. Because God is with us and God is not with them. Because Joshua and Caleb were four-dimensional thinkers. And they knew that there was a spirit realm. And because the spirit of God had departed from them, they were without protection. But they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of the negative report of people who did not acknowledge the fourth dimension and the power of God. God's with you. He's with you. If you remember that God is with you and there's angels with you and your children, if you remember that the overwhelming power of God constantly attends you, if our eyes could only be open, listen, if our eyes could only be open to the spirit realm, we would never have a moment of fear again for the rest of our lives. But through eyes of faith, they can be opened if you just believe what the Bible says. That greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And God is with us every day, wherever we go. David knew that. I want, I want, I want to read this to you because your, your view of reality will always come out of your mouth. Everyone else was afraid. Everyone else was giving a bad report. But here's what David said when he attacked Goliath. It tells you his worldview. 1 Samuel 17. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. In this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines, the birds of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all the assemblies should know that the Lord does not save with the spear, sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. This kid didn't have one ounce of fear in his body because he knew that God was with him. It comes out of your mouth. It comes out of your confession. It's the old saying, don't tell God how big your mountains are. You tell your mountains how big your God is. Don't sit around talking negative. Don't sit around rehearsing all the bad things going on in your life. You've got God with you. And when you put your eyes on God and you believe in the power of God, there'll be nothing impossible for you. But there's a fourth dimension. And David was a four-dimensional thinker. Here's another one. Fresh thinking. He had never used his, that we know of, David had never used a slingshot before. He had used a knife. When the lion or bear came against one of his father's sheep, David said, I took him by the beard and I struck him with my knife and I killed him there. Why, why did David use a, sling, a, a slingshot? Now listen to me. 
you were not going to defeat Goliath with conventional weapons. That everyone had a sword and spear, and he had a sword and spear. The only problem was his sword was a lot longer than yours, and he was going to kill you way before you ever got close to him. It was like two boxers, and one of them has arms six feet long, and the other one has long, arms three feet long. Guess who's going to win that fight? His sword was much longer than yours, and with conventional weapons, there's no way in the world you're going to get close enough to lay a hand or a sword on Goliath. And that's what all the armies of Israel knew, and that's why they couldn't do anything. But for 40 days, they never had a fresh thought until David showed up. And David, Saul tried to put his armor on David. David said, no, no, I don't want that. But David came up with a new idea. And a new idea was this. If I go against him with a spear, it's gonna put him on guard, and he's gonna throw his spear at me and kill me way before I can get to him. Because he's stronger than me and his sword's bigger than mine. But if I go against him with a slingshot, He's not going to take it seriously. I don't have to get close enough for him to hit me with his sword, but I can get close enough to throw a projectile at him and hit him in the forehead. And it really doesn't matter because once the rock gets in the air, an angel's going to take it and throw it at him anyway. Because God's on my side. It's not me and Goliath. It's me and God against Goliath. So if I can just get close enough to throw a projectile at him, and so sure enough, when David comes running down the hill, Goliath said, am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? And he didn't take it seriously. He got on his heels. And David got close enough and hit him right in the middle of the forehead. Fresh thinking. It's amazing. It was Albert Einstein who said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, hoping for different results. You've always done the same thing with money. It's never worked. But you keep doing the same thing with money. You've always treated people the same way. It's never worked, but you keep treating people the same way. You've always talked the same way. It's always brought back results, but you still talk the same way. It's not working. Or maybe it worked at one time, but it doesn't work anymore. That's true of a lot of things. There was a season when it was of God. There was a season when it was fresh, and it worked back then, but it's not working now. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll lead you into all truth. I treated Karen the same way for years into our marriage and it never worked. It only brought us to the brink of a divorce. But I wouldn't change. You know what I thought? I thought one day she'll get it. <laughs> one, day she, one day she did and she almost left me. And I read that verse one morning where it says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth and that night I prayed a prayer and said, Holy Spirit, teach me how to be a husband. He changed every thought in my head. I never treated Karen the same again. Are you ready for some fresh thinking? Are you ready to do some things you've never done before? Because he'll, he'll give you creative ideas. The best mathematicians, the best engineers, the best architects, the best every, in every category, the best people ought to be Christians because we have got the spirit of truth leading us if we'll just follow him. And David was a humble guy. He shows up at the battle line and he realizes conventional weapons are not going to win this fight. I need a fresh idea. And he pulls out a slingshot and says, bingo, in Hebrew, bingo. <laughs> I'm trying to keep you interested here. I'm almost through. One more. Fresh thinking. And the last one's forceful thinking. He didn't have one person encouraging him. Not one. Not one person said, David, you can do this. He shows up to the battle line. His brother accuses him of having evil motives. That's what happens when he shows up to the battle line. Then King Saul said, you can't kill him. You ever had somebody tell you it couldn't be done? You can't kill him, boy. You're just a boy. He's been a warrior since he was a boy. And then Goliath. What are you? My dog, you come against me with sticks, I'm going to kill you, boy. David has no encouragement, but he's a forceful thinker. Let me say something. The devil's evil and he hates you. And he has agents in this world and they'll use their mouth to try to overwhelm you. And even though God has told you to do it, and it's his destiny for you to do it, you'll not do it unless you have a forceful mind. Be respectful because David was respectful. He was not arrogant. He was respectful of every person who came against him. But I want you to understand, the devil's not going to lay, lay down and play dead just because you show up. And if you're going to do what God wants you to do with this life, you're going to have some people say some bad things to you. And I'm sure you already have. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're not good looking enough. You're not talented enough. It can't be done. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. The 
The greatest basketball player that ever lived was cut from his high school basketball team. But he had the presence of mind and the force of mind to say, I can do this. I know this is my destiny and I'm not gonna give up. The story of David and Goliath is just one of those stories that all of us can associate with in some way, you know, because we've all had those encounters where something was bigger than us. Something was just, you know, standing in front of us and keeping us from our destiny. And David, a young shepherd boy, comes and defeats Goliath because he thinks correctly. It's not in how he fought, it's in how he thought. And when David killed Goliath, it began a season of giant killing in Israel. You can slay the giants of your life. You can overcome and you can win. Uh, we want to get this entire series, I Am David, into your hands. You know, what you saw today is just a very small part of an entire seven-part series called I Am David. It's lessons in greatness from the life of King David, learning how we can realize our potential by looking at David's life, a truly great man, a man after God's heart. Right now, for your gift of any amount to support us here at Marriage Today, this is a ministry. We go all across America and around the world helping people, inspiring people, helping them to overcome problems and to get the help they need in their marriages and in their families. We hope that we've been a blessing to you. But for your gift of any amount, we'll send you the message I am, uh, I am from I Am David on David the Wounded Son. David had pain from his past that sabotaged, to some degree, God's best for his life. And one of the most powerful messages in the series is talking about dealing with the pain of our past. We'll send that to you for your gift of any amount. For your gift of $45 or more to support the ministry here, we'll send you the CD series, seven-part CD series, I Am David. For your gift of $65 or more, we'll send you the full DVD series, I Am David. We wanna put this into your hands. Listen, you can become the person that God wants you to be. You can realize God's destiny for your life. You just need some inspiration. You need some education. And I believe that this series, I Am David, will help you to become who you want to be. Here's how you can get this important resource. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series, I Am David. Based on the experiences of King David, this series will reveal how to achieve greatness and fulfillment, the secrets to overcoming the pain of your past, and how to have positive thinking in any circumstance. The CD series is yours for a gift of $45 or more. The DVD series for $65 or more. God made you for greatness. You know, if, if you have that in you to be great, that came from God. Support Marriage Today with your gift of any amount and receive the powerful CD message, David the Wounded Son from the I Am David series. When we sit silently and pretend as though we don't have pain, and don't let God redeem our pain. Not only can He not comfort us, He can't comfort other people through us. Discover what it means to be great with this series, I Am David. This series on David, you know, it tells the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, and David did some phenomenal things like Goliath and things like that, that, you know, are just inspirational. And, you know, David was a man after God's heart is a worshiper, is a great king, is a warrior, all those types of things that we learn from, you know, in this series, I Am David. David also did some bad stuff, you know, like the census and like Bathsheba and things like that. But, you know, this is on greatness. This, this series is called I Am David, but it's called Lessons in Greatness from the Life of King David because, you know, you've been called to be great. You have, you know that, that in your mother's womb, God, God never creates a person for failure or mediocrity is our God is a great God and He creates great people. And in your mother's womb, He created you for greatness. And you might say, well, Jimmy, that was about, you know, a thousand mistakes ago that God did that. Did you know that God figures all that in to our destiny? He knows we're gonna make mistakes. He knows there's a devil loose in this world that hates us. And God doesn't just create a destiny in us that can be so fragile that we lose it through mistakes or through the devil's attacks. God's, God's destiny in our lives is enduring. It's, it's in you right now. Greatness is in you right now. It's only a matter of learning how to become great. And I don't, I don't believe there's a better person in the Bible, with maybe the exception of Jesus, that we can learn from because we learn from David's strengths and his weaknesses. I want, I want to encourage you that just be encouraged today that God has a destiny for your life, that he's a forgiving God, he's a merciful God. All the mistakes that we've made when we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to put us back on the road to becoming the person that he wants us to be and fulfilling the destiny that he has for us in our lives. I'm so glad that you joined us today and I hope that this message has been an encouragement to you. We're able to come to you because of a very special group of people, our rock solid partners. We have people who support us every month here. They're really the backbone of our ministry financially. I'm asking you, Karen and I are asking you to join us as one of our rock solid partners. We have a very special resource for you. We have several, several different levels of partnership. And when you partner with us every month, we minister to you in a special way. Our rock solid partners get a resource called the Dream Marriage Library that they only get because they're so special to this ministry. Would you please stand with us financially as our rock solid partners? And here's how you can do that. Going through divorce is a lot to ask of children and often results in years of emotional pain. It's a violent ripping apart of their parents and a sense of abandonment. What sometimes we see as a quick way out can mean complete loss for a child. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage. You, you were made for marriage. Marriage Today exists to protect children from the pain of divorce and to steer couples away from marital failure by telling them the truth. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild a legacy of strong families around the world. Choose your level of partnership today and receive immediate access to the video streaming library. Become a rock solid partner today. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage building videos and updates.